Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. To all my new subscribers, welcome, welcome, welcome. And to all my day ones, welcome back. Amen. I am here with another Bible review. Um, I just thought I would jump on here to share this Bible that I just received today. And today is Tuesday, um, September the 14th. Hopefully, I'll be able to get this up today. Um, I'm not trying to have this video be too long. Um, I'm just going to do a brief review of this. Um, and I will also link um, a person that does a very, very, very thorough review of this Bible. Just so you can get um, more details on how this Bible flows. Amen. But I really purchased this Bible because it was only $13.99 on Amazon and it was a steal. So I said I could not pass it up. One, because it is giant print. This is the largest print that I ever had in my life. 15 point font. Okay. Now, come on now. And you know, guys, I'm trying to work on my King James version. Amen. And getting a better understanding of the KJV, which I already have multiple KJVs, but I never had an ER, which just means easy read format. Amen. So let's just go through this really quickly. Um, I haven't opened it. So we're going to open that together, open it together. But let me just give you the features on the back. Try to run through this as quickly as possible. But the main reason for buying this, because one, it was KJV, easy read, don't have that translation and also it was only $13.99 so I had to get it okay but anyway here it says the am I in the view here it says the KJV ER Sword Study Bible um, enhances the readability of the classic beloved KJV by updating some 17th century English words to their 21st century equivalents while maintaining the meaning and integrity of the KJV translation and the features are as a complete red letter edition, meaning when they say complete, it means from Genesis to Revelations. Amen. And it says the direct words of God indicate in red in both the Old and New Testament. Features special margin study guides um, with over 90 topics. You're going to get underlined difficult terms and defines them at the end of each verse, which is going to be so cool once I show you that. It contains outlines and summaries of each book, of course, provides resources to enhance your biblical study, including names and attributes of God. It's going to give you a dictionary, a concordance, and detailed maps. You got the giant print type of 15.5. Come on, somebody. If you, oof, I'm, this is my largest print ever, you guys, so I can't wait to see what it looks like. And then we have, um, it also includes ribbon markers and presentation page, Okay. So then you have this here giving you a comparison of the KJV Easy Read against the KJV and the new KJV. And I'm just going to read this really quick just so you can get a quick um, example of how they're going to read. And as you can see, this is in the Old Testament and it is red letter and the rest of them are not red letter, right? Because this is Jesus speaking to said the Lord, Lord God said. So it said, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And this is Genesis 2 and 18. And this is the regular KJV version. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help mate for him. Amen. That sounds like that is exactly um, the same. Um, it is. And then the new King James says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper different, comparable different to him. So that's the difference with the King James, um, new King James, I'm sorry. And then here we have again, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my words and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death to life. 
The King James Version says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth, got rid of that, my word, and believeth, got rid of that, on him that sent me, hath, got rid of that, everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but passes from death unto um, life. Amen. So it wasn't the only thing that I see really removed was those um, believeth to believes, um, heareth to hears. Okay, so that's good. So, yeah. And then we have here in the New King James, it doesn't even say verily, fairly. It starts with most assuredly, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. We didn't see judgment. We seen condemnation, but has passed from death into life. And they were saying death unto life. So yeah, there's a difference. Amen. But anyway, just wanted to just show you that really quickly. So let's get into this gem that I found online for only $13.99. Who, man, 15 point font, $13.99 for this study Bible. I'll leave the link below. Hopefully it's still on there. And they also had the regular size or the personal size, I should say. And it was um, only $9.99. And that font size is 11.5. Okay, so that's still a large print. But it was, um, it's only $9.99, y'all. So I'll leave that link to Amazon for this sword body. body sword Bible. All right, you guys, so... As you can see, I haven't been in it. Opening it with you right now. Throw this over here to the side. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Very soft. Nice. It looks, it says black, but it looks more gray to me. You, um, it's no texture really. It's very smooth and soft. I really like the way it feels. It says Holy Bible. It has a sword on the front, as you can see. Um, really nice feeling. Oof. Here is the spine. Hope you guys can see that. Holy Bible, KJV Easy Read, Red Letter Old and New Testament by um White what is that? Whitaker? Whitaker? I can't I can't even read that. Whittaker House or something like that. This is the back. It's just smooth. It looks more like a gray. $13? Come on now, somebody. Anyway, paste down. Um, I don't know what kind of... Just like... It ain't paper, but it's like... I don't know what that is. Here's your presentation page. I need to put my date in it today. KJER, Sword Study Bible, Red Letter Giant Print. Okay. Printed in Korea. And what is the copyright on this one? The copyright. Um, where is it? Usually be somewhere up in here. I guess 2015. I don't know, y'all. It usually be really, it really stands out, but I don't see it. So if y'all see it, y'all see it. Contents. Here, let me see. I'm not in this. The big book is kind of big, so we have the introduction to the Bible. All right. Oh, let me see something. Okay. So here we're gonna see that it's gonna. Um, this Bible is gonna feature the Hebrew names of God. It's gonna have underlined words. Okay, that's going to um, explain the end of each verse. It's going to be there in a certain typeface. You're going to have a box text, meaning there's going to be a box around certain types. It says quotations of God's word by biblical speakers or angels are boxed with a red line. So we're going to check that out. So anytime an angel was speaking or biblical speaker that's going to be good. Quotations of God's word by biblical speakers or angels are going to be boxed. So you're going to know that there's an angel or biblical speaker in those boxed texts. So that's good. 
you're gonna have marginal markings all right and then you got it says other special features okay so here we have um, the Bible, I mean the books of the Bible. You have Old Testament, New Testament, and then you have it here in an alphabetical order. That looks small. And then you have the basic outline of the Old Testament history. Excuse me. And then you have the name and attributes of God, attributes of God, my bad which is very good. We always want to know the attributes of God. Okay. Um, so it's telling you L means the strong one. I don't even know how to say that. Eloia means the mighty one. We know this one, Elohim, the almighty Jehovah, he is. Adon, Lord, you see how you're going to see all these words in there as well. So you're going to get the words, of, the names of God and the attributes of God. Very helpful, especially with the Hebrew background of it. Love that. And this is definitions of biblical terms rarely used today. So this is something that's going to help you. Okay, so let's move on past that. Then you have word changes. So these is all the words that they must have changed from, um, you know, as you can see, like um, teaches went to teach, teacheth went to teaches, telleth went to tell. So they're just telling you what they switched out. Um, okay, so yeah, they took all those, they saith, shout, and all that to change it to regular words of modern English. And then here's the outline to Genesis 1. So you get you an outline, okay? And then you're gonna get a survey and it looks like the author, which is gonna tell you who wrote the book and all that good stuff. And then here, and ooh, look at the text it is. There's a lot of shadowing though, but these pages is really thin, but that's okay. All right, can y'all see this? I hope you can see this. So look at here. So starting here on page three, and it's laying flat too. My hands is not on it. It's laying flat right open out in, in Genesis, okay? So it's laying flat. Um, so here we have the first book of Moses, commonly called of Genesis chapter one. And this is what they will call the subheading or one line um, introduction of what the book is about. And it's basically the beginnings of the universe and of God's people. So you're going to get those those little boxes giving you a synopsis of what you're about to read. So that's very good. And then here you have the red letter text where God said um, throughout the Bible, you usually don't see the red in the beginning. Amen. So that's different, but I like it because you know God is speaking. So that is an absolutely beautiful thing. And then as you see here, do I need to bring y'all down? Maybe I'll bring you down a bit because y'all know me, I'd like y'all to be able to see. Okay, so here in Genesis, we have the underlined word of God, right? So all the underlined words are gonna be defined. So then we have this underlined word is God. And then if you look down here at the end of that text, it says Elohim, which stands for God. And that's what it means, right? So that is so good and until it changes, we'll still know that this is still talking about God until it goes into something else. And then it's going to um, give you like this word right here, which says, we already know God means Elohim. And then here it says divided, you, it's underlined. So you look down here and it says, what does divided mean? It means separated. Ain't that cool? I like that. And then you see the study helps over here which is this G4, G5, G3, and um, yeah, so these would be study help. So this would be telling you, depending on what study help I look up, which we're gonna go to just to get a quick look. This is how you study it. Once it tells you whatever topic you pick, you'll follow this um, 
kind of like a chain reference type of thing. But we'll I'll show you how that works in a minute. But anyway, let's just take a look at this red letter and everything. I like that. This is so cool to me. So, 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 so cool. I like it. Here we have lights. We have ferrament. And we have God again underlined. We have Elohim. Lights. We have light bearers, i.e. the sun, moon, and stars. And then ferrament is going to mean expansion, expanse. Isn't that cool? I like it. I really like this. It's different. And it still helps me. Then I can also use these underlying words with the Thompson chain. I mean, not the Thompson chain, the Strongs. I'm sorry. The Strongs. Even though it gives you the definition right here. Elohim, authority, dominion is underlined. And dominion, they're saying, is authority. Can y'all see that? I like that. So cool. So you see how all these studies here, we're going to get to those. But anyway, it is a two column, as you can see. It is a two column study. Let me pull you back up. I just wanted y'all to see that. Pull you back up a little bit. Uh oh. Sorry about that. So you do see that um, there is little head subheadings as well. The Garden of Eden. You have your chapter chapter divisions as well. The creation of man is here. You see this nice, beautiful, big font, but this paper is super, super thin. It's a lot of ghosting, but it's not too bad. If you have a black piece of paper or construction paper you can put behind it, it'll get rid of that ghosting immediately. That's a little trick you can always use. But as you see here, this font is very nice. So let's go to we have a single column. Let me see. Look at all this red. Exodus. Look at all this red. Different. Okay. Oh, here the ribbon is getting stuck here. Pull this ribbon out. You only get one black ribbon. Okay. And it's short. But it works. And it is satin on both sides. So there's you get one black ribbon. This is what the poetry is looking like here. If you can see this, it's poetry. So nice. So big. I like this big font. I can't get used to this because then it's going to make me not want to read my other Bibles because I'm going to need 15, 15 point font. Look at this. This is woo, also what I'm talking about. Okay. And here again is another book introduction, outline, two column format. What is this chapter going to be about? Salvation, God warns, judges, and will restore. So it gives you a quick synapsis, synapsis of the um, book that you're going to read. So I do like that. So let me find the little help um, pages it on. Let me see something. I gotta find what page is on. Because I know it's somewhere. Or maybe it's in the middle. I think it's in the middle. Because y'all see me just open this with y'all. So. Oh, here it is. Okay, you see how the New Testament starts new. So this is the little margin study thing that I was trying to find. This right here. Okay, between. Malachi. Okay. Now, basic outline. Um, I'm trying to make sure I'm in here. Okay. So you get you a little outline, basic outline of instrument history, intertestament history, what happened in between the testaments, I'm assuming. Then you have Between the Testaments. This looks like a nice little article. 
okay, from this period to that period. If you're interested in that type of thing, you can read this article about what happened between the Testaments. Okay, that's good. Margin study reference and guide. So this is some personal study notes you can add here. Margin study reference guide, helpful scripture study guide, God, the plan, man. That's cool. Mm, that's different. Y'all see that? Again, this is the margin study reference guide on how to use this, where I was talking about those letters and lines. So these are the three types of study you can do. You can do a study on God, you can do a study on the plan, or you can do the study on man. So G stands for God. P, when you see the P's, that's going to be the plan that God had. And then M is going to be the man. So G, P, M. Those were the codes that were located on the side. And then boom, here are the study cross-references. I know it looks busy, but it's very easy to... Um, follow okay so if you want to study on god's kingdom you will be running with the g1a that's what you will be finding g1a and every cross reference here is going to be dealing with god's kingdom okay if you want to deal with god's angels and being holy you'll follow g1g that's how it goes if you want to deal with god's um wrath and anger and then you'll have all these cross-references, all this, all the way to here is dealing with God's anger and wrath. All those are cross-references in regards to that study. So this is how this study Bible works. It's all giving you scripture to interpret scripture. There's no study notes besides the little definitions that it gives you under, by the underline, everything else, scripture interprets scripture. So it's kind of, this is more of a cross-reference type of study style. So it's no commentary where another man is um, telling you what the scriptures say. You have to just read the scripture to interpret what the scripture is saying. Amen. So that's good. So it's kind of like a Thomas Thompson chain reference because it does give you links and chains to different references. It's just a different style. So let's just put one of those two. Let's see. Um... Okay, M42, to love God. So we're going we're gonna to look at a couple of those just so we can see how that flows. So M42, I'm going to say, I was going to say, y'all remember that. <laughs> M42, remember that, okay? M42, like y'all can, like I'll hear you tell me. M42, 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 okay. I think I got it in my head. M42. <sighs> He said, he said, write it down. Okay, I'm writing it. M42, y'all. He know me. He knows me. Okay? So here we go into um, Matthew, the beginning of the, um, of course, introduction. And then you go into the survey and the author. And then you into the book of Matthew. Bam. Here, look at, there goes those boxes. Let me bring you down. Okay, so the book of Matthew is going to tell us that this quick synopsis is about Matthew presents Jesus as the long-awaited king. So that's what the book of Matthew is about. So let's pull you down a little bit so you can get a glimpse of these boxes already highlighted. I mean, boxed off. Y'all know I love boxing off stuff, especially I'll be right, command. But anyway, so it boxed it off because why? It said it because it was either an angel speaking or a biblical um, I think it said character or something like that. So we know, what does this say? And you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah are not the least among the prince of Judea, for out of you shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Look at that. Behold, a virgin shall be. So this is a, this is a, sound like a prophecy happening. Look at this. Behold, a virgin shall be the child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call him Emmanuel. So this is a New Testament talking about Jesus 
being born. I mean, this is in the New Testament talking about Jesus. His name is Emmanuel, if you didn't know that. So this is nice. You see how it shows the little box and all. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Look at that. All right. Again, it's filled the two column, and then you got your red text here in the back. So let's find something to look up. What did I say it was M42? Where do I find the M's at? M40, oh, it said Deuteronomy. So let's go back to Deuteronomy. I don't have no tabs on here. Numbers, Leviticus, Exodus, Deuteronomy. I want to look for M. I said M42. Is that what it said, y'all? Yeah. Well, we just gonna pick one, but I really wanted to do that topic. I wonder why um, they didn't tell me what number. Let me see something real quick, y'all. Give me a second. Um, oh, obedience. Or maybe I'll do obedience. MO3. Y'all see that? MO3. Obedience. Starting at Genesis 2 and 16 on page 5. So, uh, right here we are on page 5 right here. And then here is our MO3. Three. And again, we are dealing with the obedience, right? We are dealing with obedience. So MO3, and it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. And since it stops here, we stop here. And then we're going to go to page 11. And again, let's see what it says with page 11. So let's turn to page 11. Page 11, and we're looking for MO3. Here it is. MO3, and this line says, And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded. Again, we are talking about obedience. And then it's telling us to just keep going. All of this is a command that Noah had to do. Remember how God gave him all the, all the instructions on how to build the ark. So this is all the stuff that Noah did in obedience. And then if you see here, it's saying that it's continuing. MO3 is continuing. So these dots mean keep going. So we're going to turn the page here. And it's telling us again to stop here. And it says, I'm just going to, I didn't read all that, but I'm going to stop here. And it says, had commanded him and the Lord shut him in then it's telling us to go to page 13 can you see that 13 so let's go to 13 again we're in mo3 the study is obedience also oh, 13 is over here on this page page 13 and then here is that mo3 cross-reference chain and it's telling us here go forth of the ark you and your wife and your son and your sons wives with you bring forth with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh both the fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth next scripture is telling us to go to page 25 you see that after we read 25 you'll get the gist so we're just going to turn pages to 25 look for mo3 Okay, do I see an MO3? All right, okay, here we go. This is page 25, it told us to go to. And then if you look down here, you have your MO3. And it says, again, this is for obedience, study of obedience. And you see how it's just given a scripture. There's no commentary, there is no study notes. So then it says, for I know him that he will command his children 
and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Then the next link chain will be page 31. And you go so on and so forth. You notice how everything is saying command or the Lord said to do something. You are in obedience to. So 31, just so we can just look one more time to find MO3, which is the reference chain for, so 31. And then here we have MO3 again. And it says, and he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go and get you into the land of Moriah, Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell you of. And then it's telling us to keep going, dot, dot, dot. You see these dots? And then these dots of MO3 continue. Look at MO3. And it continues, meaning all of this is part of it until we get here. And then we will go to page 43. So this is how you use the study helps in this Bible. I hope that was clear. Amen. So again, what we do is, um, let me find it really fast, you guys, sorry. What we do is pick a topic, whatever you wanna pick, and you just follow the chain, just like how we did, amen. So that's pretty much how you follow through with this um, chain reference. And again, there is no commentary from a actual um, theologian or pastor or anything like that. This study lets scripture interpret scripture, which is very good. So this is a normal, no, another form of chain referencing, kind of like the Thomas change, but in a different type of sense and it's limited because there's only three categories, which is, again, God, plan, and man. All right, so let's move on. All right, here's Proverbs. Let me pull you out. Here's Proverbs. That's what this is looking like. This is so different. This is different, but I like it. And I like it because it's big. So this is my biggest font. And it is a study Bible without commentary. This will be your study helps as the chain references. Pick a topic, disobedience, lion, faith, future, life. So you just pick you a topic. Humility, believe, truth, divorce, law, purpose, forgiveness. Okay, man's anger, and you just follow that chain, M28, M30, and you just move on forward like that. Of course, we know we got the little helps, the little articles. Let me see what's in the back here. So, of course, we got these articles back here. Let's see. For $13, this was a win. Okay. And it's big print too. What is all this? Biblical symbolism. You got your symbol, your meaning, and your example. Alpha and Omega. And mean Christ, the first and the last. Amalek, fighting against sin. Bear. Media, Persia. Beast or animal means nation and visions. Wow, this is good. Clothing equals Holy Spirit. Dove equals Holy Spirit. So when they send all these different metaphors in the Bible, you'd be like, why are they talking about the caliper and the canker worm? <laughs> right? Because God speaks in those parables. You'd be like, what does that have to do with anything? Look at the fig tree. Outward profession. Fire again means Holy Spirit. Fisherman means be a soul winner. Go out there and be a fisher of men. I like that. <sighs> Lamb, innocent one, who was Christ. And look at a leper or leprosy means a sinner or sin. Did y'all know that? 
Well, you thinking it's a disease, which it is, of course, but you was a sinner. That's why you was cursed with that stuff on your body nine times out of ten. You got sick and diseased up. Wow, this is cool. I've never seen nothing like this. Have y'all? If you got this Bible, let me know how you like it. Let me know. Different symbols here and meanings. Oil again means Holy Spirit. A lot of stuff mean Holy Spirit. Seal mean Holy Spirit. Seed mean offspring. That's pretty simple that you know what that means. Tabernacle mean God's presence. Okay. Wind again means Holy Spirit. Y'all see that? I don't know I like for y'all to see. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Wine press means judgment. Wolves and sheep clothings mean a false religious teacher. We know that. And then it gives you the scripture of where you can find all this stuff. And then you have over here, miracles and miraculous events of the Old Testament. You got the creation, the flood, multiplication of languages. So these is all the different miracles, frogs. You got all the plagues. The darkness came. Look at this. I'm still stuck on these um, symbols and meanings, though. Passover, sacrificial blood, covering of sin, the pearl, the truth in the gospel, which is Christ, the rainbow, God's mercy. Look at that, y'all. Okay. Then you got parables of the Old Testament. Over here, you got life and teachings of Jesus Christ on angels. Can y'all see that? This is just a little article, it looks like. Then you have the chart of life of Jesus Christ. That's different. You got his ancestry, all that stuff. That's very different. Harmony of the Gospels. We see that a lot. I'm not going to turn every page. What Jesus taught. All these are all the things that Jesus taught. He taught abundance of life, abstinence. He taught about ability. He taught about adultery, adversity, affliction, agreement, anxiety, atonement. So this is just is all the stuff that he taught in alphabetical order about deceiver, being a deceiver, about um, compromise, conceit, conversion, death, dispute, doctrine, all in alphabetical order. Fornication, um, Gentiles, gift, fill, healing, hell. Look at all the stuff he taught, all the stuff in alphabetical order. So that will be a good study within itself, too. We just want to pick something back here. Serpents, servants, sin, silence, religion, Sabbath, Sadducees, not Sadducees, okay? <laughs> Sadducees, my Lord. Then we have the miracles of our Lord, the parables of our Lord, names and titles of Jesus, Adam, Advocate, Almighty, Alpha, Omega, Ancient of Days, Prince, Holy Ghost, Beloved of God, Bishop of Souls, um, Firstborn, all these names, King of Glory, Life, Living Water, and then you have the Holy Spirit title, Deity and Work gives you scripture. This is a nice study Bible. This gives you a lot of topics to dive into. Detailed chronolo chronology of the Acts. Masonic prophecies in the Old Testament and their New Testament fulfillment in Christ. Miracles of the early church in the book of Acts. Mountains of the Bible. So you got all these different studies cast out devils 
What was this topic? What was this called? Let me just see real quick. Oh, this is just different events of the Bible. Heaven and earth, the rainbow, the Tower of Babel, confusion of tongues, Hagar, Lot's wife. So this is just a quick reference of Bible stories that you might already know of. Noah and the ark, the flood, Jacob. So if you hear about Esau and his birthright, so this is stuff that you can come and find by the story that you know. Enoch walks with God, the birth of Moses, the parable of the lamb, Ruth and Naomi, Samson, Delilah. So when you, if you know them stories, you can come back here and it'll direct you to where you can find that at. Daniel's prayer, Daniel and the lion den. So that's cool. So if you know the story, come on back here and find the page on where you want to start. Right? And we're about to wrap this up. There's so many goodies back here. Look at all this. I'm not about to go through every page of this. Oh, this looks like a concordance. Oh, topical concordance at that. A guide to personal witnessing. So if you want to know how to witness, it gives you a um, layout on how to do that. That's cool. So you can be prepared to witness the people. I like that. Give you a method and approach. Gospel plan of salvation. This is the, yeah, see? This is the stuff they need to be teaching us. That's good to have that in here, right? And then you have, of course, your topical concordance, which is the basic concordance. It is in the two column. These are very small, but this is just concordance, I think. Yep, all this is just concordance, dictionary. Oh, I've seen a map of some sort, old school mapping. Okay, Middle East before the flood on what it looked like. From Exodus to Judges. Then you got all your little explanations here, what's going on. So that's helpful because you usually don't get little keys like this. That's giving you a lot of description. Amen. There's no color, but this is a lot of information though. And I think that's it, y'all. Just a few dope pages. And that's it. Whew, that's a lot. Look at this sword Bible. Y'all. 10, I mean, $13.99. Go check it out on Amazon. I'll leave the link below. Make sure you thumbs up this. Like, share, subscribe. Hey, man, this was different. I like this. Look at this. Post means what? Runner. Heaviness means sad countenance. Mm, I like that. Judgment means justice. Fenced means hedged. Have made means shaped. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Fear means reverence. And then down here it has the word rod. Let him take his rod away from me. And rod means what? Chastisement. I mean, you're getting a whooping with the rod. Oof. Anyway, so that will conclude the holy... Bible, Sword, KJV. Go check it out. I'll leave a link below. All right. Y'all have a good one. Bye-bye now.